Okay, so today we are weaving. I have already gotten on loom, of course. I have sampled, I've done about 24 inches of experimentation, and then I have done two smaller weavings. They're both about 11 by 11 inches. So those are almost ready to go. I just have to get the whole thing off the loom. But I have enough space to do two 16 inch tapestries. So they'll be, you know, obvious, okay. They'll be rectangular, obvious, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna do one of them today. My hope is to get it all done today so that it looks cohesive and together and, you know, lovely. But that's a lot of weaving to do in one day on a rigid heddle with very small yarn. So we're not sure we're gonna finish it. And by we, I mean the royal we. Me, myself, and I are not sure we're gonna power through. Luckily, I don't have any day job stuff to do today. I have one day job stuff to do today and the rest of it will just be weaving. I have been really distracted these past couple weeks with circle weaving. It's my latest obsession. I like that you do it and then it is done. I think that's so fun. With weaving, you have to like set up the loom and then you weave it and then you take it off the loom and, it, and it's there's all of this stuff. And with circle weaving, it's just like, oh look, we have a weaving. So I've been really enjoying that and maybe mildly procrastinating with that but it's been so good to experiment with my colors also using circle weaving. So anyway, those are in my Etsy to people who are interested. I can show you them. So for example, this guy, I'm using all of these colors in my big weavings. So it was really helpful to see, like I really like how the burgundy and the gold look. I'm a fan of that. I don't love all of the poof. It's a little too much poof. It works really well in this, but it doesn't look as good on loom, in my humble opinion. So I'm a fan of this guy. This guy I love, I realize I really like the green with the colors of the warp. So I'm trying to emphasize green in some of them. It's kind of going, it's kind of going, okay. I might try to do some green. So I'm thinking for this, day here today. My warp has a lot of greens, golds, reds, and it has a line of blue. So I'm thinking I might emphasize green and gold and do like an early fall kind of vibe, which I know, I know, I know that it is November and that it is no longer early fall. I know that I'm so behind on the trends. I wish I cared more, I don't really. I was inspired by fall as it was happening. I can't be inspired by fall in the summer so that I'm ready to sell everything in the fall. This is just life, it doesn't matter. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm gonna weave all day and my back's gonna hurt really bad at the end and that's gonna be fun for me. So as we see here, as previously mentioned, we've got a lot of the red gold and then some blue green up on the warp right now. This here is the last weaving I just finished with an extra band so that I can serge the end and then fold it over and I'll be able to hang it that much easier, which I can talk about later. So I'll be able to hang that that much easier. Um, so first I need to move my warp down so that I can actually start weaving. So while I am holding the one on the back open. I'm gonna loosen this up and then I can just do do do. Like so. I am going to leave space here for the tassels, which I want to be three inches. So I'm not actually gonna start weaving right up to the edge of this, I'm gonna weave three inches away, which means I need to have a lot of little extra space. Now we've pulled it tight, so it's tensioned properly. And I am going to start with basic white, just like I end, just to give me kind of a buffer. We'll start in the up position and put in and 
I know I want it to be three inches, so we're gonna say that's about yay far. We're gonna eyeball it, because that's how we do things here. That's about three inches. Pull it tight, tuck this guy in. The first couple of throws after taking a big gap like this can be a little bit awkward, especially on the ends, which is another reason to start with um, an easy pattern and an easy yarn instead of trying to do anything too complicated to begin. But there we have it. Now I've decided to switch to gold and make that my first color. So I am just winding this on. They make machines that do this, but some of us have to do it by hand. Isn't this a lovely golden color? And I am gonna wind on quite a bit. I have a feeling, I could be wrong, but I have a feeling I'm gonna be using a lot of this for this weave. I really like this color. And it goes with all of the colors in my warp. It doesn't clash with anything. So I think that this is gonna be the dominant color for this weaving. And then I'm gonna put this guy here in my boat shuttle. You just kind of stick it in like this. You are totally supposed to put this thread here in this hole so that when you're weaving, it doesn't come out. I don't do that because I switch between colors and I switch between little bobbins without the proper whatever i don't do it right because i only have one boat shuttle and so typically for each color you'd have a totally different boat shuttle but i've only got the one so i switch out the bobbins instead of the full shuttle is the long and unasked for explanation there so we're starting with it up here and i just pass the boat shuttle through straight to the side pull it back, go down. And here I'm gonna take my end and I'm gonna tuck it in so that I don't have to worry about weaving them in at the end. Grab my boat shuttle, pass it through. I'm not sure how much gold I wanna start out with yet. So I'm gonna kind of play it by ear. a little bit of this green next. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this off, tuck in that end so I don't forget. And I'm not gonna do a lot of the green. So I'm just gonna wrap it on this shuttle here instead. This excessively large <laughs> shuttle. This is called a flat shuttle and it does the same thing. It just brings the yarn through, right? It's more set up for a rigid heddle than a boat shuttle. A boat shuttle would probably be used with more like a floor loom, but because I learned on floor looms, I have boat shuttles. We're just tucking that end in and we'll just do a few rounds of these. You'll also notice when I bring the yarn in, I don't bring it straight down, I bring it at an angle that way when I tuck it in, it doesn't pull tight over here. So that I'm not pulling in these edges, I'm keeping them nice and straight. If I were to do this and pull it tight and then bring this down, see how that's like pulling that right there? Quite unattractive and also it's going to mess with my tension. So let me correct that. Just do that. And I think I'm gonna be done with this color for a minute.
Okay, it is about noon, I think. I took an hour break for lunch and to put on a sweatshirt because it was really cold. Um, and I made some tea. So I am, I don't know why I felt the need to show that. Um, yes, so I'm about halfway through. I'm going to finish, hopefully in the next couple of hours. And we will see how that goes. So when I leave a project halfway through, I like to leave it with my next thread prepped and ready to go so I know exactly where I'm starting up again. Otherwise, it's easy to lose track of what my plan was. So anyway, I knew that I wanted to go into brown next. So I've got my brown here and so I'm just gonna get back into it. Another thing I like to do when I reach this point um, is start taking pictures, like detailed photos of the work as I go. This is because as I weave, I'm gonna be wrapping everything around my front bar, uh, which means that I'm actually gonna lose sight of some of the weaving. So if I want 16 inches that are cohesive, I don't wanna just go off of memory of, oh, well, you know, I had a line of something, you know, kind of golden. Like, I wanna know how thick that line was and exactly where it was. It was between two browns. So having some more gold by brown would probably create more cohesion and that would be great. So that's something I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna take some pictures and then I'm gonna wind it forward so that I have a little bit more room to work with up top. Something I also forgot to do was actually mark location so I know that this is 10 inches so because I'm trying to make something that at least approximates a certain length specific length I need to mark my inches before they're all wrapped around this front bar and I can't you know see where it is so this is 10 inches I'm gonna put a little pin in that because I actually still need that needle so as I go, I can remember this is my 10 inch mark. I'm doing 16 inches ish. So six inches from here is gonna be the end of my weaving. with more of the white. I am going to use this to, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use that to, so that I can surge up the edges so that the weaving isn't fraying or falling apart. And then from there I can wrap it on itself and sew it down so that we have, hard to explain, so that we essentially have a loop, which I will use to put whatever I'm going to hang it in, um, either like a dowel rod or I'm kind of thinking about doing like birch branches, get something a little bit more natural than dowel, dowel rods. So anyway, moral of the story, I'm gonna do probably an inch and a half of white. I probably only need an inch, but I like to give myself a little bit of flex space so I'm not cutting into the actual weaving for that. 